Ladies and gentlemen, would you please put your hands together for the very talented, very beautiful, the one and only, Charlie Ray Jepsen, folks. Carly is right here, folks. Carly, how you doing? Welcome to Singapore. Thank you so much. It's amazing to be here. It's ha- my first time. Call me maybe. You've, you, you've had this conversation, I don't know how many hundreds of times already, but we've got to touch on that. I mean, did that just totally trip you out? I mean, the, the, the popularity and the rapid rate in which people were, were singing it, and there's all these parodies now online on YouTube and everywhere. Does that trip you out? It was a very surreal experience. Um, I can remember first putting Call Me Maybe out within Canada, and my hope for it was that it would crack the top ten on iTunes there in my own country. And when I saw it, not only went to number one there, but in 37, 47 different countries, it, it blew my mind. Um, it's been the adventure of a lifetime. I don't think I'll ever forget this past year. You know, I can remember um, when I first ever got a chance at a starring role in a musical. I think that was the most excited experience of my, of my teenage years. I got to play Sandy in Greece. And um, I remember I was, I was the principal's daughter in high school, so I was a very, very much a goody-goody. I'd never um, done anything that Sandy does at the end where she wears high heels and smokes cigarettes and all those things. So I played the first version of Sandy quite perfectly, but when I had to become the rebellious, sexy version of Sandy, I was sort of like a duckling. I had no idea what to do. And I can remember <laughs> my family coming and just laughing hysterically at me, trying to walk around in heels and not knowing how to, how to manage myself. Um, and I would say that there was something fun about that. I, I would say to young girls everywhere, um, <laughs> a couple things. Number one, that it's important to not try to be anything outside yourself, um, to stick true to who you are. And when it comes to things that are a little adventurous and outside the box, to be brave and to try it because there's nothing more exciting about life than, than also getting to experiment. I think that was a, actually a really good lesson I learned with Canadian Idol. Um, that was sort of my first ever real taste at any sort of media exposure. And you learn very quickly a couple things. Number one, how important it is to define yourself as, as different compared to all the other contestants. And number two, that it's really important in this business to have um, what I like to call alligator skin. Um, uh, listening to the judges every night at the end of a performance, you would get a lot of good things and you would get some critical things. And I think the difference is hearing what can be helpful advice and what is just plain mean (laughs) and filtering those out and deciding okay this is something that can help me be a better performer and this is something that i need to shield against because there's there's no useful uh point in kind of investing in it and i've learned that and carried that lesson over to to everything that i do regarding the media um i shelter myself as much as possible from going too far into that world and i keep my focus on the music and when i see positive things i take it with a grain of salt just as much as i see the negative because i know it's it's just people's opinion and they're entitled to it oh well thank you first of all i think that's kind of been one of the important goals for me um kind of i think learning about this business as I've gone along, I can see the downfalls of it. And I think the main goal for me is making great music and right up there next to it is also holding on to who I am as a person and not letting it get to my head. But I have a lot of great tools to help me with that. I have an amazing team um, who are more like friends than just coworkers. And I don't think they'd ever let me get too big headed. (laughs) So I'm lucky to have them. (laughs) It's been incredible. I don't think I've ever worked so hard in my entire life. Um, It is an incredible amount of work, but that being said, it's first and foremost my passion. So if it wasn't, it would be a very unbalanced life that I'm leading. But because of the fact that this is something that excites me and fires me up every morning, um, the lack of sleep and and even the sacrifice of not getting to see my family and friends as often as I would like to, um, it becomes... It becomes one that I'm willing to make. And luckily, I have the type of people in my life who are willing to have Skype dates and phone calls with me. Um, And it keeps me fired up enough to kind of keep trucking and and feeling very lucky that I'm in the position that I'm in. I guess, yeah, I got a question for you, Carly. And that is this, is that, you know, with the amount of people uh, who are breaking through, um, you know, musical artists online and whatnot... Uh, do you ever think about maybe looking at videos online you think, wow, that guy or that girl has got an amazing voice or they're an amazing talent? Do you ever think about maybe collaborating with other YouTube artists? Um, I hadn't really up until now. I think that there is this little 
pay it forward feeling inside me that, that does feel like one day when I'm in the position to do so, it would be great to do what Justin did for me and acknowledge another artist for sure. But um, I definitely feel like that's a position that I have to earn first in order to be able to do that in the right way. Um, being signed to a label is an incredible thing, and it's an incredible responsibility to be that label. So I'd, I'd need to be in a spot where I could really make sure that I could see the artists through and confidently ask them to come with me and know that I could uh, provide well for them. All right, well, thank you very, very much, Carly Ray Jepsen. Ladies thank and gentlemen, so please give it up once again.